Autodesk Parmil 2019 includes an enhanced visualization tool to help analyze material left on your part. ViewMill's new Thickness Shading mode helps to identify unmachined stock and increases the level of confidence in having fully machined a component before removing it from the machine table. To access this new functionality, simply run a ViewMill simulation. Once the simulation is complete, select the new Remaining Material icon from the Simulation tab in ParMill's ribbon. ParMill now interrogates the state of the ViewMill simulation and a new Display tab appears in the ribbon. You'll see this contains three groups called Finished, Excess and Gouging. The group called Finished contains settings that control how and when finished material will be displayed. Here we can define a thickness that represents what we class as a finish size. For example, if we were machining a component and intentionally leaving 1mm of stock on the part, we would define 1mm as the finish thickness. In addition to this, we can define a tolerance value. This does not control the quality of the simulation, but rather controls how precisely ViewMill interrogates the amount of stock left on it. The finish group also provides an option to change the color used by ViewMill to display finished material. In this case, we'll leave this set to the default color of gray. Note that changing the color setting only affects the view mill thickness shading. When we exit this shading mode and return to the normal view mill, the colors are returned to their default settings. Finally, we can see a light bulb icon that can be used to control whether finished stock is displayed or not. The next group is called Excess and it is here where we control what is classed as unmachined stock. As before, the group contains a light bulb icon to control whether or not display unmachined material. In addition, we can see a slider bar with colors and numbers either side of it. The number on the left side of the slider bar represents a minimum amount of excess stock left on the simulation. We can also see an option to change the color used to shade the minimum excess stock. By default, this is a blue color. The number on the right hand side of the slider bar represents the maximum amount of excess stock the Parmil has found on the simulation. Again, we can see an option to change the color used to shade the maximum excess stock. By default, this is a purple color. As we slide the bar from left to right, we can see the spread of colors on the part changes. At the same time, we can see a number appearing directly underneath the slider bar. This allows us to visualize the distribution of excess stock left on the part. Note that as we slide the bar to the right, we see more blue appearing. These blue areas have excess stock left on them that has a thickness equal to the number being displayed underneath the slider bar. Finally, we can see a group called gouging. As before, we can see a light bulb for controlling whether gouges are displayed or not, and we can also see another slider bar. Here, the number on the left side of the slider bar represents the minimum gouge found by Parmil when analyzing the simulation. We can also see an option to change the color used to shade the minimum gouges. By default, this is a yellow color. The number on the right side of the slider represents the maximum depth of gouge found in the simulation. Again, we can see an option to change the color used to shade the maximum gouge. By default, this is a red color. As before, if we slide the bar from left to right, we can see the spread of colors on the part changes. At the same time, we can see a number appearing directly underneath the slider bar. This allows us to visualize the distribution of gouges on the part. Note that as we slide the bar to the right, we see more yellow appearing. These yellow areas represent gouges with depths that are equal to the number being displayed underneath the slider bar. So, let's see how we can use these numbers in practice. We'll start by undrawing the excess and gouges light bulb icons and ensuring that the CAD model is also not shaded. In this example, our finishing toolpaths have been calculated with a thickness of 0mm 
and a tolerance of 0.1 mm. We will therefore use these same numbers within the view mill finish display settings. Note that the view updates to show stock that is classified as being finished. Now let's look at the excess stock on this part. We can see the par mill has automatically calculated that this part has up to 14.4 mm of stock left on it. This is the number displayed on the right hand side of the excess slider bar. Let's use the light bulbs to undraw the finished stock and draw the excess stock. We can now clearly see only areas where there is excess material to be removed. As we move the slider bar from left to right, we can see the distribution of unmachined stock on the part. Now let's look at gouges. Use the light bulb icons to undraw excess stock and draw gouging stock. We can see that with the current finish thickness and tolerance values, there are gouges of up to 0.85 mm on the part. We can force Parmel to display gouges by changing the thickness value to 0.2 mm. Remember, we've actually finished the part to size though. By entering these values, Parmel now finds many gouges on the component. As before, we can use the slider bar to see the distribution of gouges on the part. If we draw and draw the finished, excess and gouging light bulbs in different combinations, we can see how the view mill display changes. These were the latest improvements to view mill inside Parmill 2019. The new thickness shading mode allows users to visualize where unmachined stock may be left on a component, helping them to ensure parts are machined fully and accurately.